डीजल जेनरेटर फ्यूल इंजेक्शन पंप ओवरऑल Remove the camshaft cover fitted on the side of the engine frame. Turn the engine to position the tappet roller of the fuel injection pump to rest on base circle of fuel cam. Remove the high pressure fuel block. Remove the high pressure fuel joint. Detach the rack link pin. Remove the stop air pipe. Detach the plunger oiling pipe. Detach the main air starting pipe. Detach the fuel injection pump leak pipe. Loosen and detach the nuts for fuel main pipe blocks and separate it from the fuel injection pump. Detach the injection pump tightening nuts. Attach the fuel injection pump hanging tool to the upper part of the fuel injection pump to hang up the pump and take it out from the engine. Bring the pump to the working area and keep it uh, on the pump stand. If there is no stand, you can keep it on a vice. The fuel injection pump is a delicate component that is very precisely manufactured. Even if microscopic foreign matter may cause stick or damage to such parts such as plunger and the delivery valve. Pay the most closest attention so that any foreign matter may not attach or penetrate into the parts. Now remove the fuel high pressure fuel joint cover. Turn the pump so that the tappet assembly is facing upwards. Now push the tappet into the plunger barrel by means of uh, some tool until the outside end of the tappet reaches a position deeper in the plunger barrel. Then the position of the pin. Now remove the snap ring and then the pin. Now loosen the tightening tool so that we can see that the tappet assembly is coming outside. Take out the tappet assembly together with the plunger and the spring. Be very careful not to damage the plunger.
remove the spring seat then the plate Now take out the control sleeve. And then pull out the control rack. As now it is required to apply more force to open the flange tightening bolts, socket head bolts and deflectors. Pump is now removed from the stand and keep in a strong stand which is welded to the bulkhead. If it is not available, you can keep it not on the vise also. Now removing the deflectors. Now draw lines on the delivery valve and the flange to avoid misassembly. Now opening the socket head bolts. After removing all the socket head bolts, slowly take out the delivery valve holder. We can see several small parts including delivery valve spring, spring seat, discharge valve, return valve and delivery valve spring. Be very careful not to misplace any of these items. And you can also see two locating pins on them. Now open the flange tightening bolts and then remove the flange. Now loosen and remove the set screw which keep the barrel in the position.
Now I am going to lift up the barrel. Now we are ready to lift up the barrel. The barrel may be tight. Give slow jerks so that uh, the barrel will be lifted up uh, easily. Remove the control rack air stoppage plug. Now we have removed all the parts from the pump body. Now they remove the socket head bolts and uh, take out the lower spring seat from the tappet. Now keep all the parts in a clean tray and uh, put some clean diesel and keep it for some hours. The plunger and barrel is the most important parts of a pump. It should be always used as a pair only. The cleanliness and condition of plunger and barrel is very important to avoid any sticking during operation. I do cleaning of plunger and barrel this way.
It can be seen that the barrel is almost fully clean, but still there are some uh, dirt in the grooves. It also need to be take out. Since the lower surface of delivery valve holder and the upper surface of the plunger barrel are machined and finished very precisely to seal high pressurized oil, pay attention not to damage the surfaces when handling them. I do a little lapping on the surfaces. Now all the parts are clean and ready to assemble back. The pump body is also clean properly with diesel and air blow. Now check the clearance between the plunger and the barrel. If the plunger is moving down slowly, it means that it is good to use. If it is falling suddenly down, it means that the clearance has been increased and uh, both the plunger and the barrel has to be discarded. Install new o-rings on the barrel. and then the backup rings A backup rings are two in number Fit the backup rings in such a manner that the closed gap of a backup ring is positioned 180 degree apart from the closed gap of other backup ring.
Insert the barrel into the pump housing while making certain that the set screw hole in the plunger barrel and the hole in the pump housing should align. Install the flange on the upper surface of the barrel and insert uh, two flange tightening bolts and slowly tighten them alternatively so that the barrel will be pushed down slowly into the pump housing. Now insert the set screw. If the holes are not matching, then use two socket head bolts in the barrel and then turn the barrel by means of the socket head bolts to align the hole. Now diagonally and alternately tighten the flange tightening bolts in the sequence with the tightening torque being gradually increased up to the specified torque mentioned in the manual. Then install the delivery valve spring, return valve, discharge valve, delivery valve spring and the spring seat in the order.
Fit the locating pins in the holes located on the upper surface of the plunger barrel and install the delivery valve holder in the plunger barrel aligning the pins and the holes in the delivery valve holder. Now alternately and evenly tighten the socket head bolts to fasten the delivery valve holder. Tighten the bolts with the specified torque mentioned in the manual. Fit new o-rings in the groove of each deflector and then tighten the deflectors to the pump housing to the specified torque. Now shift the pump to the stand because we need to turn the pump upside down. Fit the control rack air stoppage plug. Now we will install the control rack and the control slew. Understand that the end part of the gear teeth of the control slew should engage with the end part of the gear teeth of the control rack. First install the control rack. Then uh, install the control sleeve. Check for the movement of the control sleeve and ensure that the gear tooths are matched in the proper place. Now install the plate and then the upper spring seat. Upper spring seat have a o-ring. Then install the plunger spring on it. Tighten the lower spring seat in the tappet.
Now fit the plunger into the lower spring seat of the tappet with the Z mark facing into the opposite direction where the control rack is fitted. Now insert the tappet in the pump housing with its guide being mated in the groove in the pump housing. Now install the tool and push down the tappet downwards. If at a stage if you feel that the tappet is not going down smoothly and is tight then move the rack forward or aft uh, so that the flange of the plunger being fitted in the cut of the control sleeve properly and the tappet will move down smoothly. Then install the pin and the snap ring. Measure the ID of the tappet and calculate the tappet clearance. Make certain that after the completion of the assembling that the rack smoothly moves and that the zero point is positioned on the correct point. Keep the base circle of the fuel cam in the top position so that the tappet roller sits on the base circle of the fuel cam comfortably. Install two new o-rings on the pump body. Install the shims on the fuel injection pump mounting stud bolt. Be aware that the thickness of the shim 
will vary the Pmax of the cylinder. Before installing pump on engine, just see these three lines, two on pump housing and one on the tappet. The top line indicating the position of the static point of injection start. When the tappet roller sits on the base circle of cam, the bottom line on the pump housing should align with the script line on the tappet. Now lower the pump to the mounting position on the engine frame with the help of hanging tool. Tighten the pump tightening nuts to the specified torque. Now the pump is seated in its position. Now we will check through the camshaft cover door whether the bottom line on the pump housing and the line on the tappet roller are aligned or not. We can see that both are aligned properly. If the lines are not aligned and the height adjustment is necessary, do it with the shims. Now install back the high pressure fuel joint cover together with the o-rings. High pressure fuel joint. Now install the high pressure fuel block, tighten it to the specified torque. After opening the fuel oil, purge the pump. Now engine is ready to start.